here in lovely Ibiza at my house and this is how to DJ. I'm going to be teaching you on how to enter the scene and I'm also going to show you the basics of mixing. Okay, I was very lucky at the age of 18 to have a friend that showed me the basics of mixing. After that, I think I sat in a room for about three months and practiced my heart out because I wanted to make it as a DJ. After giving out my mixtapes in Australia, I had a career there for about five years and then I discovered Ibiza. Once I discovered this place and of course the club where I play now, Pasha, I was hooked and had to come over here. Now I play as a resident for Pasha Ibiza, I get to travel around the world, I've got a radio show in the UK and in France and I'm living the dream. Today we're learning on the Pioneer City J400s because of their ease of use, awesome functionality and similarity to the pro grade CDJ 1000s that are used in the best clubs across the world. These CDJs can play normal audio CDs, MP3 CDs and also music from a memory stick. They've also got some sweet effects and queuing and looping functionality but we'll get more into that later. You can also use these CDJs to play vinyl emulation software such as Serato, DJS and Track to Scratch. But today we're just going to be using normal audio CDs. To mix the audio from the CDJs, we're using the Pioneer DJM 400. This mixer is perfect to get started because of its simplicity, price and feature set, which boasts effects from the daddy of them all, the DJM 800. All mixers follow the same basic principle, and that is to allow you to mix two tracks simultaneously, cue up the next record, and adjust the master volume. This is all you actually need. The other stuff just helps to make your mixing smoother and manipulate the music on the fly. It's also good to get a mixer with EQ controls, bass, mid, and treble, because in the long run, this will make your mixing smoother. We'll get mixing in a minute, but let's make sure everything's set up right. Make sure your CDJ is plugged in with audio and power. You can find all the instructions in your manual. Also that your mixer is powered up and connected to your amp and speakers. Now I'm actually using powered monitor speakers with an inbuilt amp, but you can also use your hi-fi. So let's get stuck in. Now before I demonstrate the key principle of mixing, which is beat matching, I want to demonstrate mixing without it. Okay, so I'm going to start this track here. Now I'm going to start a second track, which I haven't got beat matched. Doesn't sound so good, hey? A little bit messy. And can you believe that many DJs have got away with mixing like that for years? We need more control, so let's start at the very beginning. Let's get our headphones on and see what track we're going to put on next. Notice how I'm wearing one ear on and one ear off. This is so I can hear the track that I'm bringing in, in this ear and I can hear the master output from my monitor in the other ear. It's also good to note that you can change <laughs> and use whatever variation feels good for you. What we're listening out for in this ear is the first beat of the new track. Basically we're hunting for the first kick drum. So now we need to begin to understand the basic principles of beat mixing. All electronic music is based around the same structure, which is beats, bars, and phrases. This is very important to understand when you first start DJing. So I'm going to play a track and talk you through it on the fly. Okay, in every bar we've got four beats. One, two, three, four. And in every phrase we have eight bars of four beats. I will count you through it now. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Did you hear something change then? A snare came in. This is at the end of a phrase. Basically, the way dance music is produced, something will generally happen at the end of every phrase, which is, when I first started learning, 32 beats. Also, you may notice when you're in a club that something changes on 64 beats, which is two phrases. But when you're out, have a listen, because you may have been dancing before and predicted something was going to happen in the music, say like the beat kicking in after a break or a vocal coming in. 
This is the way dance music is produced. So when you're out, have a listen and see what you can hear. make a great DJ but the most important thing is good tracks played at the right time. Now we can't tell you what tracks to play but we can show you how to play them. There are also many different genres of music so don't feel like you have to stick to one. Music is a complex animal and you'll find many things that influence you and inspire you. But one thing is for sure, the more open you are to new sounds, the deeper your musical knowledge will run and the better you'll be able to work a dance floor. And like we said before, it's all about great music. So now we know what makes up a track, let's see how we can get them to sit together. Now there's two ways you can queue up a track. The CDJs have a great function called the auto queue, which you'll find here. This takes you to the beginning of a track, which is great if your track starts with a beat, like this. That's your cue point, and then I can press play. Right. However, not all tracks start with a beat, like this one. Now, I'm, I want to find the first beat of this track, so I'm going to have to find it manually. So I'm going to have to take off the auto cue function by pressing and holding. Now, I'm going to start the track, and I'm going to use the platter to find the beat. We'll bring this back and find the first beat, which is there. Now, to make that a cue point, all I have to do is press Q, and there we have it. Right, so again, one more time. With the auto cue function on, we just start the track. There we go. Now with the auto cue function off and manually, go back to the beginning, your song will start automatically. Then we have to grab the platter, pull back the track so we can find the first beat and press Q. And there we have it. So now I'll show you how to cue up a track. Let's get mixing. First of all, I'm going to take my headphones off so we can hear what's going on out loud. Secondly, I've got two of the same tracks and I've got them set at exactly the same tempo, which is zero. Now to adjust your tempo, you use your pitch control. I'll show you. You can make the track faster or slower. So that's what the pitch control is for. Now, I've got the track that I want to mix in, queued up and ready to go on the first beat. I'll show you. You can hear that when I press Q. So now I want to let go this track at the start of a new phrase like we talked about before. Now I can hear a new phrase come in, so I'm going to count it with you. It's coming. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 I want to start this track on the first beat of a new phrase. Now if you can hear, that is a little bit off beat and we need to get our beats matched. So the way we do this is by nudging this platter here. If we nudge it this way, it will speed up. Now we're in beat. If we nudge it this way, we can slow it down. That's taking it out of beat. So let's get it back on track. There we go, we're in the mix. Okay, now we've got the same track playing, but at different parts of the song. But because we let the track go at the end of a phrase, and on the first beat of the new phrase, we can hear things are gonna change together. So if you have a listen, you can hear how the song sounds in harmony. Do 
simple, huh? Now this is the part where it can get a little bit tricky. Not every track is going to be at the same speed or set to zero, zero tempo. So we're going to try something differently now. I'm going to play this track at a random setting. I'm going to make it a little bit faster. Now I need to mix this track into the one playing out loud. So I've got this queued up to the first beat, as you can hear. And I'm going to start it at the beginning of a new phrase. I'm going to try to nudge it, but as you can see, it's going way out of beat. Sounds terrible. Sometimes you're going to mix and it's going to go so far out, there's no turning back. So we're going to stop and start again. And this is where we need to use something that every DJ throughout the world uses. It's called correct and adjust. And you do that by moving your pitch control simultaneously with nudging the platter. So you can move it faster or slower and your nudge can be your fine tuning to make your track faster or slower. So let's go to mix. As again, we'll start at the beginning of a new phrase. Now I need to make it faster. So I'm moving my pitch control down very finely. I think I have it. This is what is called correct and adjust. And this is going to be very frustrating for you. But remember, you will get it. Just practice, practice, practice. Revolution. It's so easy to get your hands on music these days. You'll be buying from the same online stores as the pros. And with over 3,000 new tracks coming online every week, the choice can be blinding. So it's best to follow a few simple rules. Now everyone's going to have their own personal preferences, but here are a few tips from me. But see what works for you. One tip is to buy little and often. With a whole load of new tracks coming in every week, it's better to keep on top of it by buying little and often. Also another tip is to listen to all your tracks at once and do a massive CD burning session. This way you can theme your CDs into genres. Personally, I do it month and year and genre. That's the way I know where I can find something I burnt 10 months ago or I bought, burnt two weeks ago, whether it's a warm up track or it's a peak time bomb. Now this is where the fun really starts. Before we were mixing two of the same track, but now we're going to mix two different tracks. Now this is loads of fun because we're di mixing different drum patterns, melodies and vocals. So you can do a lot of stuff with that. Now before, I was mixing out loud, but we don't want to have our dance floor hear what we're doing on the fly. So we're going to use the headphones. Now. Like I said before, it's good to have one ear on and one ear off. In this ear, I'm going to be hearing the track that I want to mix in, and in this ear, I'm going to hear the ma master output from my monitor. So let's start the track. Now, I'm going to show you when I mix this track what I'm hearing in my headphones. So I'll start it. Okay, this is the song we're hearing that's playing out loud. This is what I'm hearing in my headphones. And back again. And back to the headphones. Now, as I said, we have to get this perfectly beat matched to the song playing out loud. So, as always, we'll start from the beginning of a phrase. Now we're going to use the correct and adjust feature again. We adjust with the pitch control and we correct by nudging the platter. Now, because when you're mixing, in this ear, 
your headphone on. You've got to focus on the beat. Don't listen to the music. This is going to help you determine which track is faster or slower. Now this bit takes a lot of skill and practice, but it will get easier with time. Remember, it's like splitting your brain in half. You've got to hear one beat in this ear, another beat coming from the monitor, and bring the two together in perfect harmony. Now remember, when you're mixing, focus only on the beat, not the music. It's very important you just hear the one, two, three, four. This will make it a lot easier when you're mixing to work out which track is faster or slower. Now it will become instinctual eventually, just like driving a car. Also another tip is to buy records and tracks with strong drums and rhythms in the beginning so you can really hear what's going on. Also when you're out in the clubs, listen to when a mix is coming in. Really listen. Can you hear if it's on beat or a little bit out of time? This practice will give you an acute sense of timing and help you in the end. And I tell you, when you get it, it's a great feeling. the DJ so you are what you play so remember to hunt down those tracks that are going to set you apart from all the other DJs and give your audience a night to remember music is made up of a range of emotions you may like a happy uplifting house or you may like dark and moody music a good DJ will know how to piece these musical moods together to create an amazing set now all this aside, one of the most important things is that your music sounds good. So avoid MP3s below full res resolution, which is 320K, or if possible, buy WAVs, full resolution audio files. Now that we've got our two tracks in time, let's start to mix. But I'd just like to say one thing first. Even though everyone's got their own mixing style, there's one thing you should always aim for, and that is to get your mix as tight and as smooth as possible. You do not want to distract the people on the dance floor with huge volume variations or wandering beats. And remember what I said before about beats, bars and phrases. Even if you don't know your music, if you start the track you're mixing in at the beginning of a phrase, usually it will all fall together and you will have a smooth mix. So let's start to play. I'm going to use the crossfader, which is this down here. Now, as I move this crossfader across, you can hear the track I'm mixing in coming in. We're going from channel A to channel B. When we're in the middle, both channel A and channel B are at the same volume. Now I'm going to move over to channel B. Now we just have channel B. We'll go back in the mix. And see as I move it over, one of track fades out, and we just go back to channel A. Now, when we both have both tracks at the same volume, you may notice that it sounds very loud. So we can adjust this by using these knobs here. These are the EQs. We have the bass frequency, the mid-range frequency, and the high-range frequency. Watch what happens when I take the bass frequency out. Or the mid-range. So you can get an idea of what creates what sound. Or we'll take the high. There we go. Now when you're mixing, to make a smoother mix, you might want to take the bass out of one of the tracks you're mixing, maybe even to mid-range or high, depending on what frequencies are louder in each track. You might want to take out the bass frequency of the track you're mixing in or the track you're mixing out. There 
we go. Perfect mix. Now, there is another way that you can mix, and that is using the up faders, which are these here. This will give you more control over your mix and make it smoother in the end. As you can see, as I bring the volume up, you can hear the track gradually coming in. Now, as a general rule, you like to have both up faders at 10 when the track is in. And we can do the fine adjustments to the volume by using the trim, which is up here. Generally, best to have your up faders at 10. In case you do a mix maybe and you knock it and that's not good. That's too much of a volume variation. Also, you can use these little lights in the middle. They're called the VU meter. They'll help you or give you a rough guide to see if your tracks are generally at the same volume. As I take this one down, you can see that the lights decrease. So there we go. stores these days are highly efficient and sophisticated in getting you the tracks you want fast. Most sites allow you to build an online profile by storing your favorite labels and artists so that when you return you can see who has new releases. Other sites have cool features such as djdownload.com. They have a feature called Needle Drop which allows you to see the whole waveform of a track. Then you can click anywhere in that waveform to see what is happening at that particular point. Great for listening to build ups and breakdowns. Also another key to getting the best out of your download stores is checking the DJ's charts. Most online sites will provide this information for you. So you can see what your favorite DJ is spinning and buying online. So now we have our tracks in time and we know how to mix it in. But what we want to know is when we want to mix it in. Now there are a few ways you can do this depending on how well you know your records and how competent you are. Let me show you. The first one is the intro outro where we get the first 60 seconds of our incoming track and layer it over the last 90 seconds of the track that is playing out now. So let's start. As always we're going to start this track at the beginning of a new phrase. So here we go. Now I'm going to bring this track up gradually, so it gives it a smooth flow. Taking the bass out just a little bit, just so it doesn't clash. Now this is a very safe way of mixing, but it's great for songs that may clash. So it's always a safe bet. intro outro mix. Now I'm going to change the bass levels, bring up the bass of the track that I'm about to drop into. And remember we're mixing with the up faders, so at the end of the mix I'm going to bring this fader down. The next way we can mix is allow the elements of the incoming track to overlay the track that we're mixing out of. I'll show you. Then we'll start at the beginning of the phrase. Again, bringing that bass out. 
good don't feel like you have to pull it out there you can keep your mix going for as long as you want as long as it sounds good for you and sounds good for your audience music is so wildly varied in the way it can be mixed so make sure you experiment go out and listen to your favorite DJ see how they put their tracks together I know when I started I used to go out and listen to my favorite DJs and hear the way they blended two tracks to make it sound like a totally new track so experiment and have fun with it. I'm Sarah Main. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to DJ with me. Remember, persistence is the key and make sure you have fun with it. Welcome to the scene. <laughs> 